what's good? We're back in this thing. Today we're gonna be going over the Juice World and Young Thug Bad Boy music video directed by Cole Bennett. This video is probably one of my favorite Cole Bennett videos that he's done in a while. Obviously it was recorded a while ago because of Juice. It's a damn shame. Uh, dude was an instant legend, so uh, anything he puts out is gonna be amazing. I actually think this is one of my favorite songs by him and the music video is just insane too. And the beat goes crazy. So uh, just overall an insane project. If you haven't checked it out already, go ahead and do that before you watch the video, just so you can kind of get a feel of what the music video is going for. If you're new here, what I do is music video tutorials. I do a lot of different effects, video tutorial breakdowns, I'm slowly starting to get into a little bit behind the scenes stuff, vlogs, streetwear, stuff like that. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, go ahead and click subscribe and also comment and like. It really does help push my video to other people that want to see it. I would really appreciate it and it helps the channel grow as a whole and encourages me to make a lot more videos like this. Also, if you want to support the channel even more, you can go over to briandelmata.com and check out my texture pack. Basically what it is, is it's a pack full of paper rips and stuff. It helps you get that AUG slash lone wolf paper rip aesthetic. I have plenty of tutorials on it on my channel. I spend over like 48 hours ripping paper and scanning it over actual time. It is really high quality and uh, there's definitely a lot of effects you can do with it. Like I said, I have a playlist of tutorials that I've done using that pack and also I'll have the link to the website in the description. All right, so let's get into the video. First, what we're gonna do is just break down the music video and just watch it. I'll talk about some effects that I'm probably not going to cover that are just kind of quick that uh, are easy to do. I'll point out the ones that I'm actually going to break down throughout the music video. I plan on doing a tutorial on the titles here, uh, just not in this video. It would, it's going to be its own separate video just because it would take a while to do. So uh, if you want that, go ahead and smash a like. Let's get like 300 likes or something to get the title. So throughout the music video, they have this black and white effect that kind of fades in and out. I'm not going to be going over that just because it's really simple. Also, one other thing I'm going to touch on, uh, probably not go over in this video, is they just had these uh, scenes where they rotoscoped out the subject and put black bars, one behind and one above them. It's a pretty simple effect to do. It's cool, uh, definitely a cool look, and it's uh, relatively easy. You just have to have a really clean rotoscope. I have tutorials on rotoscoping in my channel, so if you're not familiar with that, you can definitely go ahead and watch those, and you should be able to figure out how to do this pretty easily without a tutorial. One thing I am going to be breaking down is this little overlay they have where they just have it spinning. I created like two of those things. Uh, I'll have them linked in the description for free. If you guys want a full pack, let me know um, of these things. I don't know. I just just made two real quick just for the tutorial. So you can go ahead and download those for free and uh, follow along. So we're going to be going over that. This is a real cool scene. I know I'll pull up here. Uh, this is the Chris Long films uh, behind the scenes of Bad Boys. Because I know in some scenes they have it completely stagnant like this. And then some scenes moving. I'm not sure if they uh, went ahead and replaced it with a green screen or just still masked it out. Masking it out would be a little harder, but they definitely have the time for it. So uh, either or could be possible. But if you want to do something like this similarly, you could just do a green back screen and then put your video on there and just kind of like pin it the corners to it so it looks like it's actually there. We're also going to be going over this TV overlay effect. I think I got pretty close to it. Um, obviously, it's never going to be exactly the same as actually recording a TV with your camera, uh, which I'm pretty sure is what Cole did or whoever did it. Yeah, we got something really similar. Again, those transitions with the spinning, we're going to be going over these things. Yeah, there's basically like three main effects, three, four main effects throughout the music video. And then the last effect we're going to be going over is this paper kind of still freeze frame kind of deal. He just has a few stills from the video or maybe photos. I can't really tell. Uh, it just has it look like it's printed on paper and kind of zooming in. Really simple effect to do. We could go over that uh, pretty easily. We can get that done with uh, using my texture pack actually. But yeah, like I said, those are the three, four main effects that I'm gonna be going over. I think I just picked like the most the most used ones throughout the music video, the kind of the whole aesthetic of the video uh, to go over. If there's one that I missed that you wanna see, maybe leave it in the comments below. Like I said, I'm also gonna be going over the titles in a separate video. I just didn't wanna make this video like way too long and cluttered. So first thing I'm gonna be going over is this TV effect that they do like this. I'll show you how to change every color and stuff and how to kind of just get the aesthetic. You're going to need some TV overlay pack. I'm going to be using the Cinepacks VHS VHSFX pack. Uh, I'll have a link to that below. And if you use the code Brian5, you'll save yourself $5 off purchase and also help me out. So if you want to follow along with the exact same ones as me, you can go ahead and do that. But like I said, you can do any TV overlay. That's the only thing you're going to need. I'll show you how to get the rest. Um, just kind of finesse in it. I'm going to be using the analog seven overlay out of the pack. And then what I did is I just dragged the analog seven into the source monitor. I'm just going to find a spot that I think looks pretty cool. Um, I want like a lot of glitch look where it's like maybe something like right here and then just in and out that and then drag it over to your main clip and get a scale of frame. And then I'm going to use multiply, I think. Then as you can see, you already kind of have a little bit of that TV effect. I'm going to be showing you a few other things you can do to really sell the effect. I think this is what really adds the actual TV effect to it not just the overlay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and go to effects controls and clicking on your background clip or the layer where 
the actual videos play, not the overlay. I'm gonna uncheck uniform scale and I'm just gonna scale it up so it's like really unproportional. I feel like the TV effect kind of just looks like that. I'm gonna scale up both of them and then just drag the height a little bit. We could even drag this down so it's more focused on juice and thug. And then you're already gonna have a little bit of that distortion. And then you can also go ahead and add something like corner pin. It's just another form of distortion and you can pin the corners. I'm gonna do the upper left and upper right and just pin them kind of like in a weird way. That way you can kind of see it just adds that little bit of stretch and just makes it a little weird looking. I'm also just gonna play around with a few other values, maybe lower left and lower right, just kind of to sell that effect a little bit even more. And then you can go over and add some lens distortion. I think this helps out a lot. Um, it kind of just gives that curve effect, like the, you know how like old TVs kind of have that bend or whatever. So I'm just going to drag it up to something like 79, 80, and then we can go ahead and obviously there's black bars and stuff now, white bars. So then we can go to transform, drag the transform effect on. This way you can still drag up the scale of it without affecting the, uh, uniform scale, the, the unproportional way of scaling. So I'm just going to drag that up a little bit more and again, kind of just framing it how I want. And if we go ahead and turn that on, you can already see that it's now looking a lot more like the effect that was it before. There's it with it on. And then I just like to copy and paste all three of those onto the analog TV layer. That way it kind of has the same, uh, same bend. And I'm even going to copy and paste the motion. So if you just click on motion and then click copy or control C and then go here and paste it, it'll do that. And then I just need you just need to scale it up a little bit more because there's that little bar right there. It's like 149 probably should work. And then if you want to change the color of the effect here, you can drag on something like tint and you can see right off this bat, it replaces the color to white. So if you want, uh, they did something like yellow in the next scene. So we could just toss yellow on. You can see that's theirs and here's ours. So ours is kind of lacking a little bit of uh, brightness and stuff. So let's go and add some curves, RGB curves. And I just drug that onto the overlay layer. And then in the master, I just brought up the value of the highlights and kind of just overall image. And then I'm actually going to just copy and paste that onto the other layer too with the actual clip. That way it kind of just brightens up the whole thing. If you have the Sapphire plugins, you can drag on flicker. That kind of just adds the old TV flicker effect. I drug it onto the overlay layer and we can go ahead and render that in and out. And then there's ours and there's theirs. Obviously they look a little different. You could probably spend some time making it look as similar as possible. I'll show you one that I did a little bit earlier before I started recording the tutorial. I did this one in red. I think this one looks a little bit better than the one I showed you guys actually. Basically all I did was the exact same thing, but I just ch uh, chose a different part in the analog source. I just chose a different part of the clip. So obviously whatever you choose is gonna make it look a little bit different. And then also the clips that you put it on uh, just look a little bit different. Like if it's more light outside, it'll look a little bit different. But yeah, I think that's pretty cool. I even drug it onto the next clip. So it's kind of like a nice transition. It's just like for a frame or two. I think that's pretty cool. Like I said, uh, just play around with it. I just gave you the example on how to do it. And the thing that's nice is if you want to replicate this effect throughout the music video, all you have to do now is just drag this clip a little bit longer. I mean, I guess you can copy and paste the exact clip, but uh, I'd recommend using a new part of the clip just so it's a little bit unique. And then what you can do is just copy and paste layer of the video layer. And then again, copy and pasting all of these effects onto this top layer here, and then also the motion. And then as you can see, it applies it to all of the effects. And what you can do is if you wanted to just have it cut in and out, you could just cut sections of the clip and have that overlay. So for example, if I render this in and out, it has that TV effect just for a second. And if you want, you can go ahead and just change the tint color to anything you want. Let's do red, for example. And just like that, it flashes to a TV just for a second. I think it's a cool way to add texture throughout your music video and kind of just change it up a bit. That's pretty much it for the TV effect. Obviously, you can play with the values, whatever you want, the corner pin, uh, distortion, tint, all those different things and make it look however you want. I just wanted to show you a cool way to obtain that effect without having to actually record a TV. This is the next effect we're going to be going over is just this spinning, uh, like I don't even know you'd call it sprocket thing. I made something similar as a PNG overlay, so I'll kind of show you how to do that. Let's just find a clip where we want it to um, be playing. I guess we could do something like this right here and just cut it so we know where to play the clip at. And then I'm going to use one of the ones I made. I'll have them both linked in the description, like I said, for free. I just made something a little bit similar. Uh, obviously, it looks a little bit different. Uh, I didn't spend too much time making it. If you wanted something like that, what you can do is I'm just going to scale it up a bit and drag it over to the right. Also, just to obviously you want to like color grade it or whatever. But what I'm going to do is just for right now, I'm going to type in HLS and drag that onto the bottom clip and just turn off the 
saturation all the way down to zero so it kind of has that same look and then i'm just gonna go ahead and keyframe the rotation and just spin it a few times maybe like three or something we'll have to play with the value to see how it looks i already think that looks pretty good i think i'm just gonna go ahead and keyframe the scale position as well and kind of just zoom out a little bit and have it follow him a bit we'll see how that looks might look a little weird but we'll just try it out i think that looks pretty cool it's a similar effect obviously not exact i'll show you a few things you can do to like really um sell the effect i just scaled it up a little bit more so it has a little bit more movement some things you can do is maybe add some turbulence displays and drag that onto the overlay layer go to effects i'm going to make the size a lot smaller something down to like five and then i'm just going to actually keyframe the size throughout the thing maybe like five to like 25 just so it moves a little bit and it has a little bit of a warpy look throughout and it's not just it doesn't look like just like an image i'm already noticing that that's probably a little too much so we can do something like 15. uh i think to sell the effect also maybe add some gaussian blur drag that on and like as it scales in or gets closer to the camera so like this would be like what i'm imagining is this is further away from the camera and as it zooms in it gets closer so I'm going to have it like maybe start off with like three Gaussian blur and then as it gets closer, like get out of focus. So maybe add it like something like 10. That way it just seems like it has like it's a, like, like an actual object getting closer to your eye or whatever. And you're still focused on the subject here. I think I want to turn down the rotation speed a little bit. I think it's spinning a little bit too fast. Maybe something like two and some change. Just like that, you have something pretty similar. And then if you wanted to, you could uh, use the transform effect instead of these and uh, change the shutter speed to like something like 180. That way it just kind of has the motion blur. I'd notice it's a little finicky when you do something like that. So uh, I'd recommend if you want to do the motion blur, just go ahead and go into After Effects and do it that way. But I think for right now, that's a pretty similar effect. I'll show you another version earlier using other uh, overlay that I made. This one was kind of similar. They did something like this in the music video. It's just kind of expanded. I'll show you how I did that real quick. Basically, all it is is the exact same thing. Gaussian blur, turbulence displace, and transform. I'll just keyframed, and I just had it kind of rotate and scale in. I went a little bit more aggressive with the blurriness. I think we went up to 20. Turbulence displace, so I just keyframed the, the size from 7 to 15 and then transform uh this is where i had the rotation kind of rotate slow and scale out slow up until like 10 frames out and then i just had it scale all the way out so just different ideas you can do with the overlays obviously just play around with them i'm gonna include those two for free like i said uh so if you want to go ahead and try an, uh, an effect like this you can go ahead and do that and then lastly we're gonna be going over this kind of like paper still uh kind of just zooms in effect i'm gonna be showing you how to take stills of a video and make it look like this so basically what i went ahead and did i already did this just to save some time it's just found some clips like this used the export frame button and saved it i did seven of them i believe hop over to photoshop and and open up the first one unlock it as a background layer and then convert it to a smart object that way any effects we put on here we can change later the first thing i'm going to do is just click on the layer go to filter add some noise and i'm going to use I'm gonna use uniform and have something like 12. That way it just adds a little bit of texture to it. Also gonna go to image adjustments and then go to human saturation. Drag that all the way down. That way it just has the black and white look that they had. Then what I'm gonna do is since if you can see in the video, it's not just 100% black and white, the effect they do, it's actually just like a little bit of a brown hint. So to get that look, you can go ahead and go to adjustments over here and then create, and then create a photo filter. I'm just gonna click on color itself, bring it to brown. I'm going to check preserve luminosity. That way it just keeps it the same brightness. And then just drag it up to something you think looks good. There we are, just like that. And then to get that paper texture look, I'm going to go ahead and go to my, my texture pack. And it's in the paper textures pack. And I'm going to drag on paper sheet 7. This kind of has this almost 3D looking effect. It like adds, it looks like it's printed on some like paper that's like actually like rough and stuff. And then I'm just going to go ahead and choose something like multiply. And then you can see that has a little bit of that texture to it. I'm also just going to go ahead and convert this to a smart object as well. Go to image adjustments and then turn down the saturation of it because it kind of had like that yellow hint. And I'm also going to add some curves to it and basically just drag the blacks all the way down. That way it kind of darkens the image up a bit and then you can really see the textures start to pop out here. And then one last thing I'm going to use is this black sheet 11. Drag that on and this is kind of like that crumple look that they had also in the stills. And I'm going to drag this up all the way and then we can use screen. Also making this a smart object, image adjustments turning off the hue and saturation and also using the curves to just get something that we like.
I'm liking the more contrast look here. You can still kind of see that's on paper or whatever. And then one last thing I'm gonna do is just create a curves adjustment layer and put it over just the image itself. And I noticed in the the photo thing, they kind of just had it a lot more contrast heavy. So I'm just going to make the blacks a lot darker and the highlights pop out a lot more. And we can just play around with something we like. Obviously it's all personal preference. And then we can go to the photo filter and I'm just gonna tweak it a little bit because I liked a little bit more brown. And just like that, you have something that looks like it's kind of printed on paper and uh, taken from an actual scan on a computer. And then you can go ahead and save that. I like to save it as like a, a number in order, like the sequence, because there's gonna be seven of them. I like to just save it as number one. And then since we have all these layers here, all you have to do actually to get the effect on the other seven, we already did the majority of the work. Now all you have to do is find where you stored all the other ones, drag on the clip, and you can see you already kind of have the effect. And then all I'm gonna do is just, again, making that layer a smart object and we can go ahead and turn down the hue and saturation and then go ahead and add that noise and just like that you have the second image and if you don't want the paper folds to be in the exact same spot because obviously it would be hard to if you were printing it out to have it crumple the exact same way you can just go ahead rotate it scale it up whatever i'm just going to do that each time in between so it doesn't have the exact same look or you could also if you want use another overlay from my pack there are plenty of paper effects this there's like plenty of scratch ones and folds and stuff like that so that's pretty cool i'll probably use that for a few of them and i'm just going to go ahead and drag all five of them in at once we can save a little bit of time and then we can just go one by one converting them to smart object adding that noise and turning down the hue and saturation then like i said moving the black texture around just so it looks a little bit different each time and then i'm just doing the exact same thing to all of them like i said you already did most of the work i'm gonna go ahead and just drag in a different paper texture maybe this fold one here and then since you drug it in, it still has that kind of blue hint to it. And if you want it to look just like the other one, you can turn down the saturation and then also just kind of bumping up the curves and stuff. I think this one looks real cool. I like the way this one looks. So we can go ahead and do that. I think this is a real cool effect that doesn't take much work. And if and if you want to do this throughout a music video or whatever, obviously you can just drag it into the same project file. So that way uh, you don't really have to do any of the work multiple times. You just have to do it once. And then I'm just using the same paper texture and kind of rotating it a little bit. File, save as, using number five. And then for the last two, I'm gonna use another new paper effect just to kind of have that variance between all of them. So we can go ahead and find something that we like. I think this one's pretty cool, the black scratch 14. Just make sure you drag it into the right place. Again, scaling it up and then just doing that curves and doing saturation to it again. File, save as. And you don't have to make it a smart object if you don't have any plans on coming back and changing it uh, later. I just tell you guys to do that just so you can uh, come back and tweak it if you don't like the way it looks or whatever. And then we're just gonna drag one last uh, different texture on just so we can see another look. Again, making sure you drag it into the right spot. And once you have the PSD with all of the paper textures in and stuff, then you won't even have to do changing it each time, each paper rip or whatever. So if you if you do do it in a music video, you could spend the time to drag in all the paper rips first. And then that, that way, all you have to do is basically just drag in the new image and you're good. And there we are, save it as the last one. For my case, it will be seven. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna actually replace Cole's transition with mine. So I'm just gonna cut out his, and then we can go ahead and just drag it up here and uh, turn it off for now. That way we can compare later just to see what ours looks like compared to his. And then just go ahead and find where you had the sequences or whatever and import your seven stills. And then if you go to sort by name, you should be able to click and drag them in an order in the order you wanted. Obviously you don't have to have a specific order, but I'm gonna go ahead and make each of these three frames, one, two, three. And there you go, you already have an image slideshow, kind of similar to his. I noticed he has a little bit of zoom in his, so you can you can do two things. You can either just do the scale, or I'm gonna go ahead and use the transform tool. That way you can just have a little bit of blur on it too, so it kind of just adds a little bit extra. I don't know if he did it, but I kind of just like doing stuff like that. So you can go in two frames or something, just scale it up to maybe 110, 111. And then what you can do is copy and paste the transform effect to all of them. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and render this in and out so it make sure we can see the blur and stuff and i think that's a pretty cool effect we'll play his real quick so very similar in style maybe the colors are a little bit off uh, so you could spend a little bit more time doing that and maybe my zooms are a little bit too aggressive so if you wanted to you can go ahead and i'm just going to go ahead and delete the transforms on all of them besides the first one and maybe drag instead of 111 is what i did maybe just drag it to something like 
107. And you can even easy ease the keyframes or bezier them in Premiere. You can just control C and copy and paste the effect to all of the images. And then again, just rendering out the sequence. And I think that looks really cool. I've seen people use the uh, image kind of still transition like this. I don't really recall anyone ever also adding zoom on to it. So I think that's a real cool thing that Cole did or whoever was editing that part of the music video. And it serves as a really good transition and it's easy to do because you can even just use stills from the actual music video itself. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the breakdown of the music video. Uh, I am gonna be doing the title sequence uh, for this music video in the future, probably sometime next week. Definitely let me know if that's something you guys want. If you made it all the way to the end, I really appreciate you. Uh, it does mean a lot if you haven't already liked and commented. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do so. Like I said, the best way to support the channel is going over to briandelvada.com and checking out my texture pack. Uh, it really does help me be able to make content full time. So I really do appreciate that. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the video. Peace.